What's up lucky heads? Today I am going to be traveling back to Bath by train to visit my parents and I'm taking the Astali E20.8 play with me. Now Bath is known for its steep ass hills and I'm going to be taking this bike right onto them. I'm going to be talking you through it. I'm going to be taking it on different terrain and I'm going to be getting that real world range. This is the sexier, sassier version of the Starly E20. If you haven't seen that bike, then you can find my full review of it by clicking the link right here. Idiot. But first, my main challenge right now is to get the e-bike on a train. I planned ahead and booked a bike reservation on the train to give me peace of mind whilst I travel. But later that afternoon, I got an email to say my train was cancelled. With the current state of the UK rail network, I can't say I was that surprised. So now I'm thinking, am I going to be able to get this bike on the next train? Technically, you can take a folding bike on the GWR train without a booking, as long as it's 20 inch wheels or less. But from experience, this train can get really busy. Luggage aplenty. The play isn't as small as the mini folders like the Astali E16 or the Axons that we have on our store so I need to find out if a bike reservation can be salvaged. Hi, um, I had a train uh, for the 7 o'clock to Bristol which is now cancelled. 10.28 the next one now. Great, I was just going to ask you, the one that I booked at 7 o'clock, I had a bike booking. Do you know if I'm able to put my bike? I can fold it but it's just a little bit bulkier than standard folders so I wondered if there was any space on the 728s. Uh, you'll have to, it's too late. There's so many bikes in there, so yeah. you have to find. When, you, when the train's advertised, check with the, if it's available. So. How, how do I check if it's available? When you go to the train. So, how will I find the right carriage? You'll have to find someone at the start. So, on the platform? On the platform? Yeah. Okay, alright, thank you. Not at all helpful. Oh my goodness, we made it, I'm here in Bath. So, question here today is why am I in Bath? Well, I wanted to try something a little bit different. You guys at home have been telling me that maybe we're a little bit London-centric. So here I am today, trying it out in a new city with all the different kinds of terrain. I'm talking hills, I'm talking city and country roads, and also those towpaths as well. I'm gonna be trying this bike behind me on all of them. So, first up, Let's talk about its features. This is an e-bike designed to fold up in the boot of your car, get out of town and eat up more off-road terrain as you explore the countryside. The frame is made from a sturdy aluminium alloy and the eight-speed Shimano gears were specifically fitted for more bite when you need it. The 250 watt brushless hub motor puts out a punchy 50 newton meters to tackle hills and is connected to a cadence sensor for instant power when you pedal. Estali claims the play can cover 50 kilometers or 31 miles on one charge. So today we're gonna find out the real world range with my own tests, so keep watching. The discrete battery is removable, made from Samsung Panasonic cells and takes between three to five hours to charge. Brakes are hydraulic and comes with front and rear lights plus 20 inch puncture resistant tires. You can also fold this baby in 10 seconds flat. In total, this bike weighs in at a very respectable 20 kilograms. It can take a rider weight of up to 130 kg and between five foot and six foot five in height. Opt for the pro to get the rear rack and mud guards included and for up-to-date pricing, head on down to the link in the description below. With a price tag of around £1,800, this bike thinks it's the bollocks, so we should really test it out. Is it worth the price tag? Let's look at how it handles with differing terrain. I'm talking city roads, I'm talking towpaths, and I'm talking the hill chest. So I'm currently in gear three, and I'm pedaling along, and it does not feel like a 20 kilogram bike whatsoever. Now I'm gonna start to bring up that assist. You can hear a slight whir of the motor. It's not that loud, but you can hear it. Level one is very casual, very, very light, especially having those lower gears. It's really, really background. And I'm gonna bring it up to two, and all of a sudden I'm coming up to about 11 miles per hour very, very easily. I'm gonna click up into, I'd say, gear six, and I'm flying at 14.5. Let's take it up to gear four and it really pushes me off and already 14.5 15.5 i'm there it's such a lovely push the fact that this motor is 50 newton meters 
means that it's got a lovely bit of torque and that torque just pushes you through. So, I'm in level five assist. Look at me fly. Woo! Straight up to 15.5. I feel stable. It's really, really easy to maneuver. I can take my hands off. Well, I'm not gonna moment. It's really bumpy here right now. <laughs> but it's still easy enough to take your hands off and indicate. So today I've actually fitted the Schwalbe Billy Bonkers tires. And they've got this tread pattern that is more oriented to sort of tarmac riding. So I can really feel that these tires are lapping up this kind of terrain. You can choose between off-road tyres and hybrid tyres when you do make your purchase of this bike so if you know that you're going to be more on tarmac then you can go for the hybrid or if you're going to be a bit more off-road then you can go for those off-road ones instead. Okay tarmac testing complete. It is an absolute banger on this terrain but how does it fare on towpaths? Let's find out. Look at these puddles. Look at that. How are the tyres going to do? The thing with this kind of terrain is you don't want to be absolutely smashing it at top speed because there are pedestrians around. And also, you've got to go for a little bit of a slower pace of life, don't you? So there we go. I just went in level three assist up that hill and we were going at a bit of a proddy pace. I'm actually going to take it up to five just to see how we do going up it. Oh, I just ate that up. That was beautiful. There's no suspension on this bike, but it doesn't feel uncomfortable at all. I think that's the thing with towpaths is it's that kind of lighter gravelly terrain, which isn't too much trouble, but my God, those potholes and those cracks in bath roads, the surfaces are not good. Not many bikes will be able to take that on, to be honest. Okay, I need to cross over a road. So let's take it up these very steep steps. No problem whatsoever. It is just the right way that you can lift it up and down without it being too much of a burden. Oh, we're actually at the hill where I'm going to be doing the hill test today. This is Barfoot Hill, but more on that later. Hill test is to come. Oh, cobbled, cobbled bits and a steep-ish slope. So let's see how the hydraulic brakes work for me. Let's see. Those brakes are working well. Over cobbles as well, which is pretty blooming rocky. Okay, and we're back onto a smoother track. Ooh. Ooh, listen to that echo. Ooh. Reverb. Oh, I do have fun on my own. This is a bike for people who want to get away, who are up for doing some less tarmac terrain, a bit more sort of towpath, slightly off-road, bit of gravel. This bike is brilliant for that, and it has that portability factor as well, so you can put it in your car, you can put it in your motorhome, so you can take on your adventures with you. I had to just stop and sit down and take in the scenes. And I am going to be doing a hill test next, so let's see how this one performs. But before I do, if you are finding this video at all useful, please do think about hitting that like button. And I am going to be doing way more content, in-depth reviews, further afield around the UK. So if you'd like to keep up to date with all of that, then do hit that subscribe button, become an Electrohead. You don't have to own an electric bike, own an electric scooter, own an electric car to be one of us. You just need to be watching our content, hitting that subscribe button and being a part of the Electroheads army. We are a force for good. We're trying to make a change. We're trying to get people onto cleaner, greener, more independent travel because, you know, public transport sometimes isn't really quite what we need it to be, is it? Hill test, let's go. For the hill test, I'm headed over to Bathwick Hill. According to Climb Finder, the average gradient is 7.8%, with the steepest 100 meters being 12.9%. That's insane. Total ascent is 148 meters and is 1.9 kilometers in length. So I'm gonna climb all the way to the top and it just keeps going and going and going. Up there, I'm actually gonna share something very special with you. It's somewhere I haven't been to for years and years and years. But first, let's take on this hill. Cue dramatic music. Let's do this. We're going at a very healthy 30, 14 miles per hour. Level 5 assist. I'm in gear 4, 5, 4, 5. Let's get that cadence and that resistance going. It is flying guys. This motor is just pushing me forward. Right, we're getting to a steeper bit. I'm starting to feel it in my thighs now. Getting those glutes activated, this is a steep bit. Oh my God, drop a gear. Level three. I'm not used to cycling on hills like this, but the play is making this incredibly manageable. I'm so impressed. And this is why a cadence sensor on a bike 
can be a fantastic choice because a cadence sensor means that once you start pedaling, those sensors tell the motor, get moving, and it just gives you that power. The Astyla E28 used to have a torque sensor, but due to customer feedback, they've switched everything to cadence. And I can see why. I think I'm at the top. Easy. <laughs> wow, 50 Newton meters makes a real difference. And here we are, up by Bath Uni, which leads me to my next location. I knew this was it. I had to just double check on the maps. This is where my dad brought me to come and learn how to ride my bike. It's a very, very special place, actually. Little did baby Ailish know when she was learning how to ride her bike, all these years later, it would be so, so vital and such a huge part of her life. Learning how to ride my bike is such a vivid memory for me. It's one of the few that I can recall crystal clear. And I remember my dad specifically shouting at me, Ailish, look where you're going. The bike will turn where you look. And I remember thinking, I'm gonna look over there and see what happens. I looked left and the bike just went with where I was looking. And uh, I remember falling over with the bike on my side. And it's just, it really brings back some beautiful memories being up here, especially on such a beautiful evening like tonight. This place means a lot to me. Proper father-daughter moment. And it still looks exactly the same. <laughs> the moment I came past it, I, I just knew memories were triggered. All right, all right, it's getting a little bit chillier. The sun is setting. So why did we go back a day earlier when I filmed to tell you exactly the real world range that I got on this mic behind me? Let's go. I just have to stop and start recording because the battery is nearly dead and there's something interesting going on. So the battery has basically hit zero and the way the bike is telling me that is what it's doing it's still giving me that level five assist but it will turn off it will have a pause and it will turn back on again so let me show you guys now i'm going to talk you through here you go it's gonna be really good assist and it just turned off there just to let me know when you have a battery that doesn't give you the exact percentage it's really hard to know how much power you have left i'll check back in when I know the real world range, guys. Two seconds later. That's it, battery's gone. Let's take a look at the range. The bike's battery is officially flat. And I've worked out how much mileage I've been able to rack up on one charge. Bearing in mind, this is level five assist the whole time. It has been mainly flat terrain because I started off my journey in London, coming to the train station, coming here, riding it around on fairly flat roads apart from towards the end when I was doing some hilly bits in Bath. I weigh about 64 kilograms. The weather's been pretty warm, about 22, 24 degrees Celsius. And in total, I've been able to do 25 miles. Bearing in mind, I have actually had very heavy backpacks full of camera equipment, laptops, whatnot. So I'll put up on screen exactly how much that weighs. I'm gonna weigh that when I get home. Let's put that here. So 25 miles. Starley claims that you can get 50 kilometers, which is about 30 miles of range on one charge using level two or three assist. So I think I've actually done quite well. For a bike that costs 1800 pounds, it is fair to think that perhaps it should have a little bit more range. You've got to take into account that, of course, the battery, which is in the seat post, it is really slender compared to a lot of the other batteries that you get in this style, which means that the bike can maintain its look, but it does mean a smaller capacity battery. You can, of course, pedal this bike without any assist, thanks to the eight gears. But in terms of range, this is something that you guys probably want to keep in mind if you are thinking about purchasing this bike. What is your commute? How long is your commute? Does this range cater to you? Now, Starley have actually informed me that they are currently creating a booster battery pack that is gonna go into where the bottle holder is on this bike right here. So that is gonna double the amount of range that this bike can deliver. So that is something to keep in mind. That battery extension pack should be available on our store in the coming months. But speaking of store, well, the reason I make videos like this 
is to give you lot at home a sort of digital test ride but we do have a store with e20.8 plays available to test ride yourselves so if you're in the london area then please do come on down we are based in london bridge and i'll drop details in the description down below of how you can get to us it's really important for you guys at home to know that we don't get paid to make these kinds of videos by a starly a starly doesn't give us any money we make these videos to keep you informed and the only way that we can get by and survive and keep doing what we're doing is by selling electric bikes and electric scooters that we're passionate about so if you would like to support us please do buy through us if you've watched this video and it's really helped you make a decision get this bike through our store we'll look after you we have an amazing team of people there to make sure that you have a smooth journey along the way and i've even got a discount code alish50 that's going to get you 50 pounds off at checkout and that is for any electric bike available on our store i've spent a bit of time with this bike now and there are some main themes that crop up when i think of it i'm talking portability power utility and also adaptability this is a bike which is perfect for somebody who lives in a place like Bath or travels to a place like Bath. It eats up inclines. It is really great on both tarmac and towpaths. It's really easy to carry up and down stairs. And well, when you want to store it away, it's really quick and easy to fold and to put to the side. It doesn't take up much space at all. Loads of people have come into our showroom to test this bike. I'm talking all different kinds of ages. And this is the inspiration for me coming out here to try this bike out myself because these people have come from further afield. They've come from the Cotswolds to try this bike out and they loved it and they bought it. So I thought, why don't I try this in a similar terrain? There was a younger person who came in who wanted to commute with it every day. This is an adaptable bike and it has that rear rack if you need it and also that water bottle holder, which does also mean that you can add on that battery pack as well, should you need to double up that range. But now it's time to hear from you guys at home. What do you think about this bike? Are you considering it? What do you think about the range? What do you think about the accessories that you can get onto it? Is it a yes? Is it a maybe? Let me know down in the comments. I hope this video has been useful. If you want to know any more information about this bike, I'm going to drop a link down into the description below where you can get all the details necessary. And please do think about buying from us because if this video has been helpful, pay it back by coming through us. And it really helps me to continue to do videos just like this in the future. All right, guys, that's enough from me. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all soon. Bye.